the experience we've had in the past. In the past, we would take tap water from the bathroom, from toilet bowls, from the swimming pool, and figure out exactly how much dissolved solids is in there. So, uh, yeah, we did well to see you guys are going to be doing. But the results were not too promising because you're looking at mass of about a milligram. And so if you're, you have error in your weight, you can actually get negative numbers. And so uh, students weren't getting results. So we decided to ma modify the experiment a little bit and spike up the concentrations of the solid. And what you guys are going to be doing today is uh, a similar experiment, except now you're going to be calculating the amount of salt in salt water. So you guys will be given an unknown, and you will be graded based on whether you get that concentration correct. So. Uh, it's been modified from the previous um, the previous objective in terms of measuring the concentration of solids in tap water. We're just going to be measuring the concentrations of salt in salt water. Okay. Now you guys are going to be using the beakers in your locker. Okay. What you will do is you're going to do this particular experiment in triplicate. It means that you're going to do three trials of the same solution. Don't do different solutions. You take, you'll be assigned an unknown. Suppose you're assigned unknown number one, okay? First thing you want to do is you want to take your beaker, okay? You want to take your beaker, you want to make sure that your beaker doesn't have any cracks or stars because you're going to be heating it up. If, it got, if it has stars or cracks, and you heat it up and it breaks, you're going to have to start step one again. So inspect your glassware, make sure there are no stars or cracks, make sure it's clean, okay? Make sure it's dry, okay? Just put it on the, the scale, tear the scale first, make sure it's zero, and then place your beaker on the scale, and then weigh it, and make sure that the mass it stays constant for at least 20 to 30 seconds. If it fluctuates, try not to breathe, okay? Because it will fluctuate, or at least leave it alone for a while. Do this to three beakers. Write down the mass of the beaker as shown on this uh, data sheet on page 176. The next thing you want to do is you want to measure a volume of water. I forget how much they ask you to uh, measure out. I think they ask you to measure out about 100 milliliters. Okay, so what you want to do is take your graduated cylinder, make sure that your graduated cylinder is dry because if there's any water in there, then it's going to ruin the concentration. Make sure it's dry. Add your salt solution and use a Burrell pipette so that the volume is exactly 100 milliliters. You want to make sure that when you have your graduated cylinder, this meant be the 100 milliliter line, that your meniscus is like that. It sits at the bottom of that particular line, okay? Take that and then pour it into your beaker and then take your beaker and put it over a hot plate and boil it, okay? That will be probably time consuming. It'll take anywhere in the order of 30, to a, 30 minutes to an hour. The wider the beaker, the faster it will evaporate. The smaller the, the beaker, the slower it will evaporate. Okay, so try and find large beakers to do this particular uh, reaction uh, or this particular procedure. Try and have three beakers sitting in a hot plate. If uh, you don't have enough room in a hot plate, then bring out another hot plate because we've got a lot of hot plates uh, over under that, that sink. Okay, when the volume gets to be about one milliliter, where there's still moisture, turn off the heat. Because if you keep the heat on to dryness, the salt will crackle and pop and you 
start seeing salt pop all over and you're going to lose your sample, which means that your concentration will be lower than, than the true value. Okay? So once you have about one milliliter, turn off the heat, remove the beaker and put it on a wire mesh on your desktop and allow it to cool. Once it is cool, make sure there's no moisture at the side of the beaker because if there's any moisture, that'll add to the mass and you're going to get a premature higher mass than predicted. Okay, so you want to make sure it's completely dry. If you need to, put it back on the hot plate and make sure that the residual moisture is completely gone. Once you do have it sitting out and there's no residual moisture on the beaker, allow it to cool for about five to 10 minutes. That's because if you place a hot item over a balance, the hot air on the bottom will cause a buoyancy error. It will actually cause that beaker to weigh lighter. So it's got to be cool to room temperature. Once you do that, then you record the beaker with the residue, and that'll be on the column here, and then you just subtract the beaker from the beaker plus, plus the residue, that'll give you the residue. And if you have the mass of the water, and you divide it by the, if you take the mass of the residue and divide it by the mass of the water, which contains the residue, you can get your uh, concentration that way. If you multiply it by 100, you get the percent. If you multiply it by a million, you get parts per million. And that's your experiment. While you are waiting for the water to boil, answer the post-lab questions, okay? Because you have a lot of idle time for that. Each, each group is doing three samples, okay? And I will come around and assign you an unknown. Don't just pick one out, because if you pick one out, then you're going to get it wrong, okay? I need to assign you an unknown because this lab this part is based on your technique, and part of your technique is using a scale and properly weighing things. So I will come around and assign you guys an unknown, and I will initial this in your lab notebook. You need to find my initial, you need my initial in your lab notebook to get proper credit, okay? So everybody, not just one member of the group. So go ahead and find a partner. You guys will need safety goggles for this lab because you are using boiling water. And uh, this lab should be about an hour, 90 minutes to complete.